yeah 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 in this video we're going to create a next js application that has single sign on using azure ad b2c and then we're going to retrieve some of the information from azure b2c remember to subscribe okay in your browser go to portal.azure.com portal.azure.com you can just go to all resources and create after going here type b2c search for it you'll see azure active directory b2c make sure it's from microsoft click on it mm -hmm. create an instance and then just create a new um, azure b2c tenant Just fill in the information i've already done this so let's um log into my b2c to do that you just switch account switch directories switch to your b2c directory tenant <laughs> what we're going to do is register our application first uh, click on app registrations click on um, register a new application um, display name we're going to call it mavicho or test um account in india identity provider organization uh -huh. cool that looks good um i'll redirect uri from web uh let's let's use localhost um because we're going to use nextjs port 3000 uh, register now you have your information here now once you have your information it's good to store your information somewhere next thing let's go to authentication we already have our redirect uri if you scroll down a bit you'll see our front channel logout uri we're going to require access tokens to access microsoft services like graph save go to certificates and secrets now we're going to generate a new client secret is going to be used now you must copy this value somewhere because it's not going to be displayed again expose an api add a scope so you know, uh, we need an application id uh, we have a default one generated through a grid there let's just save and continue public info dot read uh, read public information just gonna paste it here as well we enable it add the scope okay the next thing is user flows this determines what we want to be done so if it's a sign in only we can have that flow if it's a sign up and sign in that means you'll have that little link saying sign up if you don't have an account that will be in if you want a, a password reset that'll be in as well so navigate back to your azure ad b2c overview screen on the left hand pane navigate to user flows click on it create a new flow by click on the new user flow button for our case we're going to require a sign up and sign in so you're going to sign in but if you do not have an account you're going to sign up let's click on it using the general available next generation user flow latest features definitely don't want to use the legacy one create we're just going to give it a name we already have a, a prefix there one main flow All right so we want an email sign up for local accounts now these are important the email type of uh of multi-factor authentication is free 
The others like SMS or phone calls will be charged. So just take that into consideration when you choose this. We're going to leave it as uh, email in this particular tutorial. And the MFA enforcement is not required. So we don't need it now. These are information that's required when one signs up. So you can opt to require a surname, a name, if they are not provided by default. Let's create this flow. Can show more actually here, just to show you some of them, job title and the likes. Create it. Perfect, it's created. Now we're going to create our next um, JS application. This name can be anything. Um, so whether you told me, John, anything will do. Just gonna use my alias, my video. npm run dev to run a local debugging build none optimized there we go we can see that it's actually set up correctly let's just edit this file just to make sure everything is working hunky dory yeah please subscribe always a good thing please subscribe perfect it's even centered that's super cool and then yeah now that we saw that this is actually working what we're gonna do is clear this page we're just gonna leave the please subscribe there now let's do the heavy lifting by the way now we're going to add the microsoft authentication library uh, which will actually help us to sign up users and sign in users awesome hunky dory let's check our packages file Cool. We have the Microsoft Authentication Library Browser dependency in the React um, components installed. We're good to go. Now, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to need our own root application. So, uh, because Next.js has convenience and they manage that for you, but we want a custom root application. So let's create it under the source directory here. Under the source directory, just create a pages folder. Under the pages folder, add an underscore app.js. Yep. So this is where we're going to create our function, our main um, root function. In our page.js, we're just going to move it to the pages folder. Yes, we want to move it. And then we're going to rename it to index.js. In our underscore app to js we're just going to create a normal function which is actually a component as well the name is not significant component that's the main component and the props right and then we're just going to return for now we're just going to return the component it needs us to actually restart on the server Okay, let's just remove these because we don't need them because we actually want to inject a context um, to it a microsoft authentication library context so we can use um, the login throughout the whole application and the application can be aware of the authentication library so under source just create an auth config file and then in here this is where we're going to put our login requests and all these things. This is where we're going to put our config um, for MSL. You can actually find a reference to this file's format in that location. So, yep. Just going to put a template that I've put together here. And what you want to do is that you want to replace this client ID with your actual client ID that you created 
um, when you registered your application. So we're just going to do that. Now that we have our auth config, we're going to pass it over to um, the Microsoft Authentication Library. And then this particular instance is what we're going to provide to our provider. All right, this is not defined. We're just going to define it by adding an import. Um, let's proceed to add a button to actually prompt a login. Now the authentication library, the Microsoft authentication library um, has some components for us in uh, the context that uh, we are, we've authenticated a user. We can render a particular portion and if we have not um, authenticated a user, we can render a particular portion. So these are called authenticated templates. So this the authenticated template and unauthenticated template inside the Microsoft Authentication Libraries React components. Let's import them. And then how we use this is that we're going to say in an authenticated template. So this portion will only display, will only render <laughs> if uh, we have authenticated the user. Now we'd logically need um, a logout button if someone is already logged in. On click, we can create a new method. Right, and then we're going to do the same uh, for the unauthenticated case. If you're not authenticated, just make sure you change this to the unauthenticated template and then handle login. Like copy and paste. Mm, please log in. Right, and then we're going to create these two methods login and logout. Ah, uh, problems with copy and paste, you see. Just the spelling there. Now we need to um, use the instance again. For us to do that, we're going to import the use MSL hook. need the configuration as well let's import it let's use the hook now in the handle login um, the instance actually has a method to handle the login and um, logout Pass in the login request, which is our configuration. And then in case, because it's async, in case uh, there's an error, we want to just uh, log it. And then once we're done, since this is a thing, we're um, taking advantage of it. We're just going to log the response. And um, we're actually going to, let's just save the response somewhere. Uh, we're going to create a state let's do that create a state that we're going to store some of the account details from the logged in user
in the callback after handling the login through a pop-up we're just going to save the information let's save and check the browser um let's click on the login button wow it works but it says do you want to sign out uh no we actually want to sign in and login and login ah copy and paste errors let's save and go back let's click on it again this means our auth config is not set up correctly let's update it let's check whether it matches the azure portal redirect uri and uh, authentication let's just remove this letter part and the uh, https and save let's remove the s here no pun intended let's retry refresh login as you can see in the log let me zoom in a bit invalid scope the provided input parameter scope is not valid go back to the azure portal under your apps registration on the left hand pane you'll see expose an api just copy that scope there if we go back to our auth config we're just going to paste it under our scope let's save and retry As you can see, it will prompt you to give access to the app to retrieve your, some of your information. It will actually list which information it actually requires. We created a test user. Let's test out the signing in. you're not logged in then we're just going to use the react syntax to retrieve the state's value after a render Let's sign in again. As you can see now, we're able to display it because our page has re-rendered. Now what we're going to do to prove that this actually syncs, we're going to modify our identity's name. Let's change it from John Doe to Fuba. Let's see, we've updated our profile. Let's navigate back, log out and login. We're expecting it now to show Fuba instead of John Doe. Let's just log in with our John Doe account. Perfect. It has synced automatically without you having to change anything your side. Awesome. Remember to subscribe and like the video. Subscribe to the channel and like the video.